Hey, what's up guys? In this lesson, we're going to talk about simplifying fractions and mixed numbers. If you've never watched my videos before, highly recommend that you pause and try the examples when prompted. And also there are always free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. So let's just jump right into it and talk about how to simplify. And this might look maybe kind of simple in some ways, like maybe you already know the answer to it. But I want to actually talk about the process because that's really what matters here. So. I have this fraction 55 over 77. How do you simplify something like this? Well, really what you're looking for is you're looking for what number divides into both the top and the bottom. And in this case, that would be what? It would be 11. So I'm gonna divide the top and the bottom just like this, both by 11. And so then what do I get? I get five over seven and five and seven have no like numbers that you could divide them both by besides one. So this is what you're looking for when you want to simplify. So this is kind of the, the first part of this. So if we just go through a couple more of these, so let's say I've got 15 over 35. So thinking about this, what could you divide into both? Well, you could divide five. So I'm going to just write out that for myself like this. So I get three over seven. And then again, three and seven have no common factors, so we're good to go. Now, I want to take a look at B here and C and kind of compare them for a moment. So taking a look at B, let's say that you, you notice that these are both divisible by six. So that's great. So I notice that these are both divisible by six. And so then I get two over three. So this is kind of what I consider to be the best case scenario, but I want to show you what happens if you looked at this and you didn't think it was six. What if you thought it was two or three? So I'm going to illustrate what to do then with that type of scenario here. So let's say I look at this and I can't figure out what the largest number is, but what speaks to me first is two. So if that's what I see first, I'm going to divide the top and bottom by two. Let's see what I get. I get nine over 21. And so now here I have to think about this for a second and notice that, oh, I can divide the top and bottom by three. So if you don't notice the largest number, it's okay. You might just have to take extra steps. And sometimes the largest number will pop out at you. Other times it won't. So notice that the largest number I could have div divided by here would have been six, but instead I just took it in two steps. I divided by two and then I divided by three and two times three is six, right? So that, that, that all those things are connected. So simplifying as many steps as you need. So now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here and I want you to try these three and then when you're ready, hit play and I'll show you the solutions. Okay, so starting here with D, so the largest number that would divide the top and bottom would be six, but let's take it in steps again. So let's say that I first noticed that the top and bottom are both divisible by two. That's gonna give me 21 over 27. And then I noticed, oh, I can divide the top and bottom by three. And so if you ultimately divided by six, what you would have gotten is seven over nine. So however you got to seven over nine is fine. There's more than one way. And you could have also started by dividing with three. So as long as you end up with seven over nine, you're, you're good to go. Okay, so now for E. So for E here, what jumps out at me is that the top and bottom are definitely both divisible by five. So this is gonna give me 21 over 27, and now it actually ends up being the same as what we were just doing, right? So now I can just do the same thing. So sometimes it's gonna be necessary, like it really might not pop out at you what the, the largest number is. And so once again, so I'm just gonna get seven over nine, and now I'm done. Okay, so now for F here. All right, so thinking about the factors here. So you might've thought about this one for a moment, so I'll just tell you what it is. Um, this one's actually already simplified. So this one is already simplified, but maybe you were second guessing yourself. So how do you stop second guessing yourself? Well, there's a huge hint here in that think about the factors of 125. So this is definitely divisible by five. So what is, let's just think about it for a second. 125, we said it's divisible by five. So that would be what? Five times 
25. Okay, now this 25, how does that break down? How could I write out that with multiplication? Well, this would be 5 times, and then I'll write this 25 uh, now as 5 times 5. Okay, so I want you to take a look at this for a moment. This is what's known as a prime factorization. So every number has its own unique prime factorization. So the only way that you can make 20, 125 is by taking 5 times 5 times 5. These are all prime numbers, right? They're only divisible by themselves and 1. So these are all the numbers that will divide into 125. Just taking a look at 113, you can tell right away it's not divisible by 5, right? Because it doesn't end in 5 or 0. So if you are just really sitting there like trying to force it, pause and think about it for a moment and think about does it make sense? So if I think about how to um, multiply 125 together by just using its primes, there's just no way that they're going to share two terms in, in common. So I know that it's got to be already simplified. Okay. So now I want to turn our attention to just mixed numbers for a moment and talking about how to convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction or vice versa. So let's say that I've got three and four fifths. So in general, you're probably going to want to always convert your mixed numbers into fractions. That's just kind of usually the, the best practice for most things that we do. So to do this, I've got three and four fifths. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply these two things together. So you're going to take three times five, and then you're going to add the four plus four. And all of that is still going to go over this denominator. So the denominator stays the same, but you take this number times the denominator plus the top. So if I work all of this out, this is going to be 15 plus 4 over 5, so that comes out to 19 over 5. Okay, so I have two of these for you to try on your own if you want to pause the video and then hit play when you're ready. So for A here, so I'm going to take 5 times 2 plus 1 and then put all of that over the denominator of 2. So this will be 10 plus 1 over 2. So this comes out to 11 over 2. Okay, now for B, this will be 7 times 3 plus 2. All of that over that denominator. So this becomes 21 plus 2. So this ultimately equals 23 over 3. So now let's just go the other direction. How do I turn this improper fraction into a mixed number? So what you can do here is you can actually use long division to help you. So let's think about this for a moment. How many times does 5 go into 6? So I've got 5 goes into this first 6 here once. Take the 1 times the 5 and subtract that off. So we're just kind of going through the long division for a moment. So now I bring down the other 6. How many times does 5 go into 16? That would be 5 times, so minus 15. So this remainder right here, this is actually what's going to be kind of the, the last part of your mixed number. So this will be 15 and 1 fifth. So you always just use that, that denominator that you were given. So you just take the remainder and then you put it over whatever this, this denominator here is. Okay. So I've got two more for you, so if you want to pause the video and then try them and then hit play when you're ready. So for 2, or for 15 over 2, so if I think about this, so 2 going into 15, 2 goes into 15 7 times. So I've got this remainder of 1, so this will be 7 and a half. And then how many times does 3 go into 25? 3 goes into 25 8 times, so I can subtract this off, and then I'm left with 8 and 1 third. And so, like I said, you're going to probably move back and forth between the two forms. It just kind of depends on what, what you're doing. Um, in my class, you can generally just leave things as improper fractions, like on tests or whatever. But 
sometimes the homework system might want you to switch back and forth, so just wanted to make sure we talked about that. Okay, so that'll cover it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.